So, uh, because it's still pretty cold outside, it's minus 12 on the Celsius scale. We're going to um, try something a little different today. We're going to do something inside. Oh, and also you may notice that I'm trying something different. I'm using these um, ear ear pugs. I don't know what they're called. It's a new new thing, a new thing I've found. And so I'm testing them out to see if it makes the audio better. Audio is not bad when I'm filming inside, but when I'm filming outside and I'm standing away from the camera, apparently not everybody can hear me as well as uh, I had hoped. So I hope these little ear pugs, I think that's what they're called, ear pugs. I think that'll help. We'll test it out today. Anyway, today, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the kitchen. And I'm at the kitchen table now. But um, I'm going to head over to the kitchen and uh, going to make a pot of coffee. And the pot of coffee we're going to make, I'm going to use my grandfather's coffee percolator. And so we'll do it the traditional percolator coffee style. So head over to the kitchen. Hang tight. Okay, so I put the beans inside of the grinder and uh, I want a fairly coarse grind. Works better with a, uh, give it one more shot. There we go. Coarse grind works better with a percolator because what you do is you put the, let's get this out of the way. This is how, this is what a coffee percolator looks like. You probably, maybe you already know this. So you got this, there's a basket goes in here. This thing gets filled with water and then the water, as the water heats, water goes up through this tube and it comes out the top here and then it spreads across this thing here and the coffee beans are in here and then it trickles down like this back into the, back into the uh, coffee pot and it circulates and so you just watch as you're brewing you watch the color of the coffee as it's going through this little glass knob here you'll see it in action in a minute okay so what i did was i filled it up there's a there's marks on the side of it here there's five seven and nine and so i've got it filled up to the nine cup measure and <clears throat> i bet if i asked my grandfather he would tell me how much coffee you would put in this thing here but Sometimes there's um, there, there's little marks on it, so you know how much to put in for per cup. But I don't see any on here, and my grandfather has long left the long left the show, so I can't ask him. Anyway, you put that in there, then you then you lower it over, over this tube. See the tube I've lowered it onto, and then you put this basket on top of it, lower it into there. I can guarantee you that, let me put the lid on like that. I can guarantee you that my grandfather would be horrified at the amount of coffee grounds I put in here for the amount of water, He's thinking that it's absolutely wasteful because, uh, well, everything was expensive and hard to get. You know, this is a guy who grew up in the era of rations, rationing and... Uh, the Great Depression and whatnot. So, okay. So this thing is ready to go. I'm going to um, pop this on the element and I'll turn the camera around just so you can see that. Okay. So it's on the, on the element and I will turn the element to high temperature and start putting this stuff away and bring that water up to a boil. While we're waiting for the... Uh, coffee to come up to perk um let's quickly show you so i was talking with my dad this was the uh coffee the cone that he used and um it um believe it or not it survived through the fire of 2014 well it survived i guess you know there it is and look at this another thing i found in the wreckage of the, the homestead was the the mug that he had in the, in the little sugar spoon so I've, uh, I keep these two on, uh, on a shelf as commemorative pieces, just as a link back to, well, good times that we had here. If you listen closely, I can 
hear it. It's starting to heat up the virtues of uh, homestead life is patience. You don't just go over and put a pod in the Keurig thing and get a cup of coffee. Nope, you have to uh, take your time. Oh, that's brewing. Look at this. There we go. How's that, eh? I think it's happening. There it goes. We have percolation. So you don't want it percolating too hard. So I'm going to turn the element down a bit. Go to a medium high. You want to keep it percolating, but you don't want it boiling too hard. <clears throat> and you sort of, you watch the color. See how this is pretty clear? There's a bit, of, a bit of brown coming through there now. So that means there's coffee coming back up. <clears throat> See how it's, the coffee coming through here is getting more brown? Looking like coffee now instead of just water coming up through there. Boy, once it starts going, it's. Uh... Oh, you can hear it slowing down now. I like a bracing, good, strong cup of coffee, so I'm letting it go. But uh, my grandfather probably would not have let it go this long. Okay, I'm going to turn it right to low. Let's see what happens. He also wouldn't have used, like he would, he had a cup of coffee. <laughs> Here's my coffee cup. It's like massive compared to the, uh, you know, you saw the one my dad used. So, you know, for me to say that's a nine cup coffee pot, well, they probably talk cups, like a real imperial cup, whereas I'm using a mug, which is uh, probably two, two or more cups. I don't know how many ounces, like a 16 ounce or something like that. So that's, if, my, if I do my math right, that's uh, two cups. I don't know, I, I just guessing that that's how much this cup holds. Okay, so see how the percol percolation is slowing right down? I could actually turn it off now. <clears throat> and just let it settle down for a minute. Yeah, see, watch up here. the second time I've ever done this you know I only read about it on the internet thought I'd give it a shot I'm gonna take it off the heat now just put it over there and then you let it settle down for a little bit before you pour a cup now I can't remember if my grandfather would open the lid and take the basket out of it or whether he left it in I'll have to look that up later, seeing as I can't ask him myself. <clears throat> Some people also say you pour like a tablespoon of cold water in the spout to settle it down. So let's see. Oh, another thing is I don't have a camera crew with me today. I'm doing this solo. I got the camera on a, uh, what do you call it, on a little tripod. <clears throat> so I'm just peering around. Let's see, what does that look like? It looks and smells like coffee. Smells like coffee. Hot like coffee. Tastes like coffee. I'm going to have to let it cool down for a minute before I um, have a sip of this. 
Hang on. First thing you do is burn your taste buds off, then you don't know whether it's good or not. So, how's that for magical? The sun's just starting to kiss the maple. Beautiful. Sun's just coming around the mountain. I'm waiting for that frittata. Another 10 minutes or so. So anyway, so he would leave that on the stove and he would have that in the morning and he'd have a cup of coffee or two. And, um, <clears throat> and then at lunch, we'd come back in at 12, always 12 o'clock, straight up, 12 o'clock lunchtime. And he would warm it up again. He would just put it on, on a low perk and just run it through again. So, I... so that's it for another episode of Homestead on the Hill. As I started out by saying, we're going to make a cup of percolated coffee. I did. I'm drinking it. It's good. I'd do that again on a nice lazy Sunday morning. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again next week. And, you know, if you haven't yet, it'd be great if you could subscribe and um, give the give the old uh, thumbs up to this episode. And if there's anything else you want to see, anything you want to know about what I'm doing on the homestead, then um, add a comment and I can uh, see what we can do. So that's it for now. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you next week on the homestead. Bye for now.